And welcome back. I have Francis Skaliski with me with the Missouri Department of Conservation. First of all, good to see you. Good to see you, Tom. Second of all, despite what the dock owners say at Fellows Lake, I'm not the invasive species that we're going to talk about today. <laughs> there really is an important one that I know you want to address. Right, right. Zebra mussels are the what they're talking about today, and the reason we're talking about it is because they are in Missouri, but they're in a small enough quantity that we're kind of ahead of the game. All right, why don't we go back to you're, you're saying we're ahead of the game, but they had to start somewhere, and there's got to be a bigger impact. Right. Let me throw some numbers at you, Tom. Right. In, uh, and this is why we're concerned about them. They were introduced to the Great Lakes in the 1980s. They spread throughout the water systems of the central U.S. But going back to the Great Lakes from 1993 to 1999, uh, the Great Lake power industry alone spent $3.1 billion controlling zebra mussels. And the total economic impact in that same area was $5 billion. So we don't want it to get to that level here. So that's why we're doing all this proactive information. But it is invasive to our area. Yes, yes. We have them in several of our reservoirs. And the thing is, once they're here, they're here. And the only thing we can do is prevent the spread. So that's what we're talking about. And what the way we do that, one of the big ways they spread is on boats. They can produce thousands of larvae, which are microscopic, so we can't see them. They attach it to boats. They can stay active. They can stay, in other words, live yeah. outside the water for up to five days. If you put that uh, period in the fishing culture of Missouri, you, that could be several fishing trips. So in that five-day period, they could have been transported to another body of water. We don't want that to happen. And this is to control. This isn't eradication we're talking right, about. Right, right. They are here. And so as I said, it's, you know, we really can't do anything to eliminate them. What we can do is prevent the spread. So the proactive measures, which everybody, all everybody has to remember is three words, and those are clean, drain, dry. Okay, now, you know, the picture in my mind, now I know the, the zebra mussel is, it's not this huge animal. However, you said one, one word, and that's microscopic. Well, the mussel itself, when it's an adult stage, is probably about the size of your fingernail. Uh -huh. But the problem is, and, and that can cause problems too, because what they do, they attach on hard surfaces, and that includes other zebra mussels. They form these huge clumps of mussels that can clog water intake systems, that can ruin habitats. From a uh, biological standpoint, they can they they filter feed on the plankton, and that wrecks the food chains in the uh, local reservoirs. From the economic side, these huge clusters of zebra mussels that form can ruin water intake systems and cost the money that I was citing earlier. So, getting back to the three words I was talking about: clean, drain, dry. When you take your boat from the water, you clean it. You drain the water out of it right where it's at, and then you let it dry for several days before you take it to another reservoir. And this isn't like giving it a once over and say, yeah, my boat looks clean. Uh, just no, assume. No. You assume you might have taken something out of the water. Yeah. You know, just assume you've taken something out of the water. This, you, These are three good steps to take to prevent the spread of that something. So you're just being a good steward of area lakes when you do this. So if you're, you know, affecting the food in the lake, that affects the fish in the lake. They can do disappear. If you're affecting the water intakes, you're affecting us, everyone at home. Right, right. Every This affects everybody from the water intake system. Obviously, a lot of us drink the water that comes from the lake, so yes. that's, that's the economic impact. But even the fishing, that, that has an economic ripple effect. That's not just for the people who fish. There's people who work the docks, people who work the restaurants where the people eat when they come off the water. So even that has an economic ripple effect that goes beyond the fishing on the water. So don't leave it all to the Department of Conservation. You take an active role as well. Next time we meet, we're going to talk about hydrilla.